Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as you know, there's a significant disease burden of diabetic retinopathy in our country with uh, 8 million adults affected, and it is the leading cause of blindness um, in our country in working age adults. And right now, you know, when most people that get diagnosed with diabetic retinopathy, they have NPDR or non proliferative diabetic retinopathy. And over time, if their disease is not well controlled, they can progress onto proliferated diabetic retinopathy or PDR. And that's where we really start to see vision threatening complications. Right now in the real world, um, typically once someone progresses to PDR, that's when treatment really starts to begin and, and intensify. At the end PDR stage, the predominant treatment pattern is to recommend, you know, better glycemic control, better blood pressure control, follow up with your primary doctor. Um, although we do have anti-VEGF injections, you know, as we saw in the Panamera trial, you know, with uh, two steps of improvement in DR, in the real world, the, the treatment burden is, is, is significant. And given that this population, they're typically asymptomatic, um, you know, it's it's a pretty high burden, and we know from other studies that there's a large percentage of patients who may become lost to follow up. Um, so the idea of an oral agent is very attractive. Um, it's something that they can continue to be on treatment, even though they may not return to the office for in office injections. Um, and the idea is if you can have something that can stabilize the disease or even uh, protect against uh, progression. Uh, it would be very valuable because you potentially can um, avoid some of those vision threatening complications down the line. Yeah, absolutely. So Zeta-1 uh, was a phase two randomized double mass study uh, looking at the efficacy, first of all, and then also safety of an oral medicine called oral uh, 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 called APX thirty three thirty, and it's an oral agent that works by uh, inhibiting a transcription fact factor called REF one, and REF one is upstream to pathways involved in uh, VEGF expression and angiogenesis, as well as uh, other pathways such as uh, oxidative stress, inflammation. So the idea is that by inhibiting REF1, um, you may be able to simultaneously address all these different pathways and normalize um, neovascular homeostasis. So the way it was designed, uh, patients were randomized into a treatment group and they received 600 milligrams a day of APX3330 versus a placebo. And then patients were followed uh, up to week 24. The primary endpoint of the original trial was the percentage of patients with a two-step or greater improvement in the DRSS score in the study eye alone. So one eye was designated the study eye. Um, and this endpoint was selected based on recent trials on looking at anti-VEGF uh, injections uh, in the eye for DR. Um, the results have been previously reported and there was a uh, not meet its endpoint in terms of two steps of improvement. But what was interesting that in, the, in uh, an important secondary endpoint was the number of patients with a three-step or greater and four-step or greater uh, worsening that it was significantly reduced in patients who received uh, the, the treatment, treatment arm. Um, the way it was uh, conducted in the original uh, analysis was that each eye would be considered a separate, you know, uh, separate entity. So if one eye progressed two steps and the other eye progressed one step, combined that would be a, a binocular sum of a three-step worsening. Um, there was an end of, uh, end of phase, uh, end of trial uh, uh, meeting with the FDA and we you know discussed you know moving forward, uh, potentially looking at binocular DRSS score. And that's the reason for this post-doc analysis is that, you know, after discussion with the FDA, it was decided a, a binocular DRSS person level scale that takes both eyes into consideration makes sense for a systemic oral treatment. And that uh, the second reason for conducting the post-doc analysis is that this is the population that uh, will be looked at, will be included in upcoming phase two slash three trial.
Importantly, so the original trial included patients with mild PDR. And and I think, you know, because of the because of the, the data and what we're trying to achieve here in terms of pre preventing progression to the stage of PDR. So for the post hoc analysis, you know, only eyes with moderately MPDR to severe, you know, MPDR were included. And that's the planned patient population for upcoming phase two slash two trial. Um, and we looked at a binocular uh, DRSS person level scale, which means that you take both eyes into consideration, but it's not a simple summation of the two eyes. The worst eye is given uh, is given weight, so that if the worst eye progressed three steps, that would be considered a three step or greater um, worsening in DRSS uh, in this binocular person level scale. So the post hoc analysis showed that there was a large numerical difference between the two two arms. Uh, there was uh, no subjects in the treatment arm had a four step or greater progression in their binocular GRS scale compared to fifteen percent um, in the placebo arm. Um, similarly, five percent had progressed three step or greater versus fifteen percent in the placebo arm, and this is 62.5 percent reduction. Um, these results did not reach statistical significance. However, that we did see a large uh, numerical difference between the two arms. And this post hoc analysis, um, you know, I, I, the thinking is that with an appropriate, at least uh, powered sample size going forward, that we're hopeful that these differences we're seeing will, be, will reach significance. Uh, one of the results that was important is that uh, fewer, fewer APX thirty three thirty treated subjects progressed to PDR. It was eleven percent versus twenty six percent in the placebo arm. So that's a sixty percent reduction. Again, the p value is 0 0.13, so it didn't reach statistical significance. But the end, on, the end in this post hoc analysis is you know about thirty five in each arm. So hopefully, with the largest study that we can, you know, it would be power to to reach the significance. Yeah, no, I think just overall, you know, it's it's a really interesting uh, space. And, you know, there's a large unmet need, like I mentioned earlier, to treat early in the MPDR stage to prevent progression onto PDR. Um, in a lot of ways, once they get to PDR, it's almost like too late. We've already lost so much ground. And all the treatments that we're doing is sort of coming in at a very late stage. So if we can get these patients stable and prevent progression to PDR with an oral therapy, that would be that would be a significant development in in the treatment of diabetic retinopathy um, uh, arena, and I think this post hoc analysis uh, supports further evaluation of this oral agent in upcoming trials.